Hey, I'm Katrina, and in this video, I'm giving you five of my favorite video games. talk about Red Dead Redemption. It came out in 2010. I played this game years ago and it pretty much is an open western type of action open world game that takes place in the fictional U.S. state of New Austin and Mexico. It follows a guy named John Marston and he's pretty much like a bounty hunter. Not The story is good itself. I do like the story. There were parts that was like, oh, you know, tug a little bit at the heartstrings. But the reason I really, really liked this game was the whole undead version of the game. So the version I played had the extra component where at some places or certain times of the day, I want to say nighttime, the game had John going after these zombie-like people, zombie-like creatures. I love those type of things. I feel like if you can just shoot them all, just shoot them all, then do so. And that's literally why I like the game. There's really no other reason for me to really like this game, literally just because of the fact that I liked the part when they were undead and he was shooting these zombies and he was just like burning them up with fire and everything. And I love that. So I know that's weird. And people's like, people are gonna probably ask me like, really Katrina, is that why? That's exactly why. It was really dope that he was able to burn up these zombies and shoot up these zombies. I thought it was amazing. So for that reason, it's one of my top favorite games talk about Gears of War. It is an Xbox exclusive. It originally came out in 2006. The last one, which I think was um, 5 in the storyline because there was a prequel, but the fifth one in the storyline came out in 2019. So I played all of the games. I played the whole series so far, but it's actually one of my favorite games. It's one of my favorite series or rather franchises because it's pretty dope. Like the story is pretty much, it follows Marcus Phoenix, who's a soldier who's pretty much trying to save humanity from this locust herd. And the locusts are these like big, ugly looking things that like they have guns and they take people sometimes and these people change into them too. And they sometimes are underground, they take over buildings and everything. But the reason why I liked the game was because the story behind it, like the story behind Marcus and his group, even with the story, with the recent game with his son and his son's best friend, there were always parts of the story that just resonated like emotionally for me. And by now I would hope if you haven't played it, this is about to be a spoiler, in number three, his best friend Dom died, and when that happened, I was ready to like flip everything. I was actually very upset. I had to stop playing the game for a while because I was just like, so yeah, I did all of this. Three games in, and you just killed a homie. And I didn't like that. I was very upset about it, and I just had to stop the game for a while because, you know, I had to marinate in my emotions and feelings about it. Anywho, I liked the game. I thought it was pretty cool for the game it was. Next, I'm talking about Mortal Kombat. Now, any gamer know that Mortal Kombat is definitely one of the classics, one of the staples of video gaming. Mortal Kombat happens to be one of my favorite games, but in this particular video, I am talking about Mortal Kombat 10. Mortal Kombat 10 came out in 2015, and it supposedly takes place 25 years after the Mortal Kombat that came out in 2011. We get introduced to some new characters, such as Cassie Cage, which is Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade's daughter, as well as Jackie Bridge, Briggs, excuse me, who is Jack's daughter. The story pretty much follows 20 years after Shinnok's defeat. There was also Quinn Chi's defeat and it wound up having Scorpion and Sub-Zero and Jax back in human form. I don't want to spoil the whole video game or anything even though I'm sure people should have known by now since we're on Mortal Kombat 11 but the reason why I truly enjoyed this game outside of the fact that it has the normal mode and it had the tower mode which you can go against people online the story was a, such a good story, and I was so glad that they decided to add other characters to it. And while I do love Katana, and I love Scorpion, and I love Sub-Zero, etc., etc., it was just nice for them to introduce characters that were new. So to have children, or Johnny Cage daughter, for instance, being a really main role in this game was amazing. I like that they finally got Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade together. I mean, it took them long enough over the years, the little things they've been doing with movies, video games, comics, etc. So I really, really enjoyed this game. I loved the story. I was actually very upset when it ended, and I have not finished playing Mortal Kombat 11 just yet, but this is definitely one of my games that I really loved playing over the years. Next, I'm talking about Resident Evil 6. Now, most people, even if you're not a gamer, know about Resident Evil because they had those horrible movies 
horrible movies, but Resident Evil as a franchise whole has had games, plenty of games over the years, at the point that even did Resident Evil 1 and 2 over for the newest systems. So I'm talking about Resident Evil 6 because for me, that was my favorite game. I liked it because it was three different stories with seven characters that kind of intertwined. In this game, it is Viber C because you know Resident Evil always have some really weird virus with some weird doctor or scientist just couldn't leave shit alone and here we are with a regular virus and while we're not in raccoon city necessarily there's some talk of raccoon city there's different parts like i think one of the parts in the game was in japan for instance i thought a lot of the action sequences was pretty dope the monsters are pretty like what you would expect for resident evil but i thought the action was cool i like the new character so we got introduced to shirley birkin excuse me, Sherry Birkin, uh, Helena Harper, Pierce Nivens, and then you also had Ada Wong, Leon Chris, and Jake Muller. Some of these characters were already known, some of them were only introduced in number six. So I really liked the game. I thought it was really cool. I liked the melee attacks, so you was able to use attacks with your hands rather than guns. And of course, again, being able to shoot things is always cool. So I think, I mean, some people I've seen from like, countdowns on YouTube and other people seem to think Resident Evil 6 wasn't that cool but I disagree because I like it it was a little different than like Resident Evil 1 when you're stuck in like the house mansion and they even had that Resident Evil that was in the house with the creepy family which I really didn't like that game and I was actually looking forward to that one because it kind of gave a horror movie vibe but it kind of fell short for me. Resident Evil 6 was really cool. Again, I liked all of the characters. I liked the stories that intertwined. It all made sense. There were parts that made me very sad, and I don't want to say what it is, because in case you didn't, you know, watch, play the game, I don't want to spoil it for you. But I really liked it. So I think you definitely check it out if you're not a Resident Evil fan person, or if you want to play it again, because I'm kind of sometimes tempted to play it again just because, then do so. I think wanted to give an honorable mention to The Last of Us, which came out in 2013. I just started playing it uh, I want to say a month and a half ago because, you know, again, I am not a gamer. I just got a PlayStation 4 recently. So I was like, I needed, I like games with like good stories and stories that make me feel emotional connections to the character. So I did start playing the game and I want to give it an honorable mention because from so far as where I am in the game, it is an amazing game. It's a great game. I was already cried a couple of times, which I hated that. But it follows Joel, who's a smuggler, who's smuggling a teenage girl named Ellie across the post apocalyptic United States you know, with cannibalistic zombie looking things and humans or hunters as the game call it. So I love the game. I cannot wait to finish it. I actually really need to rush to finish it because The Last of Us 2 has come out and I'm all behind. Sorry guys, I'm like super slow with this. Last but not least, I want to talk about one of my absolute favorite games, which is called The Evil Within. The game came out in October 2014 and is directed by Sinjin Mikami, who also did Resident Evil. Now, everybody, again, I always tell everybody I'm a big horror fan, and this game absolutely delivered. It follows Detective Sebastian, his partner, Joseph Oda, and his other partner, Julie Kim Kidman. However, the reason why I really enjoyed the game, it was a different type of story, and the very first few scenes when he goes into the hospital and everybody is massacred, and then he sees somebody in a hooded figure, which we come to find his name is Rurik, behind him, and then the next, very next scene, you see he's hanging upside down, with this guy very reminiscent of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Killer. I loved the game. I thought it was a very interesting concept. I thought the whole out of the world, like, oh, is this real? Is this not real? They had, like, the undead, like, zombie-looking creatures. They had a lot of the bosses. One of my favorite bosses was the Executioner, or AKA Boxhead. He had, like, a safe box on his head and this really crazy mallet. He was actually, like, super, like, creepy. Not scary, just creepy. Like, okay, this guy dead has, like, a box on his head and he's, like, super angry. And I really appreciate it the effort that put into the game. I like the fact that she was able to like sneak kill and you know learn how to do traps and stuff to kill the monsters. But my favorite part of the fact was it was just really creepy and unsettling. It was a really, you know, the backstory was a bit emotional. Like you kind of understood why Rurik was mad, at least I did. I thought Leslie was a very interesting character. I liked the backstory to Detective Sebastian. He had a lot of crap going on, you know, lost his wife, lost his child. So with all of that and the fact that it's put in this really crazy horror world, it was just like one of my favorite games. And like I will tell anybody, if you haven't gamed before, if you're trying to get into gaming and you want something that's kind of scary, and I say kind of scary because, again, I don't scare easily, definitely check out Evil Within. 
So that's it, guys. You guys tell me in the comments what are your favorite games of all time? What games you like to play? Are you an actual gamer? Because I'm not, you know, I'm not really like a gamer gamer. And I will look through them. I will respond. And thank you so much for watching my video. Bye, guys.